it is a great pleasure to welcome back to Cinema Showcase the stars of House Sitter, Goldie Hawn, Steve Martin. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to see you. Thank you. It's nice to be here again. First of all, I, I, I've got to tell you, um, and I know you would, you would, you would uh, throw me across the room if I didn't, uh, how much I enjoyed this film. Great. Uh, thank you. I, I was given that warning earlier, so, uh, but no, I, I really did. It was, and you know, it's, it's, so, uh, it's so terrific to see a comedy um, with an audience as opposed to just maybe three or four critics or something, because it, it, it does add... It's, it's the only way to see it. I don't know how people yeah. can judge a comedy when you're sitting alone. No, yeah. it's really unfortunate. Although, haven't you seen movies late at night on TV and you just sit there up alone laughing? Well, I, I do. I mean, I, I have certain movies, yeah, yeah. you know, certain movies. Um, but then again... Then again, not. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more contagious. If you saw it with a couple of critics, and it's better seeing it with a large audience. Also, I know that critics don't like to reveal to the other critics if they're enjoying a movie or not. So they're sort of very sort of, they don't want to laugh or give yeah. anything away. Critics, I mean, I don't want to be naughty here, but, you know, critic, these are audience pictures. These are pictures that, that please the audience, that make them laugh, that, you know, hopefully that's, that's who they serve. Critics, historically, uh, you know, don't come out and, and review comedies uh, as being great films. It's, it's unfortunate because it, it, uh, it's very important to the human spirit to laugh, and it's not although, an easy thing to do. Well, although to you, you, you've both um, start in films where the critics did like it as much as the audience, such as uh, uh, General Benjamin, I've, I've upped you, uh, <laughs> uh, um, you know, um, certainly the critics adored that film. Yeah, they did, but it was also a film that had a important feminist social message. Yeah. So it had undertones of. Uh, I know I learned a lot from it. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> and what did you learn? <laughs> it wasn't never to get married, because you did well, just that. the importance of woman being on her own, and <laughs> that she's a person too. <laughs> <laughs> More on that later. <laughs> I learned that too. I, you I'm, learned it. I'm glad you brought that mm -hmm. brought that up. Yes, yes. Um, baby steps. What? <laughs> and from last Boy Scout. Steps. From last Boy Scout, I yeah. learned that when you put the gun into his mouth, you should really <laughs> put it up high and not point it back, because then you just blow out their neck. You want to blow out their brain. <laughs> These are very important social messages oh, we're, we're learning. Uh, we're learning here. Where else would you learn something like that? You know, one of your, one of your early, I think one of your earlier films, Steve, um, is still considered a classic, Pennies from Heaven. Ooh. And um, I don't know if this movie, um, I, I hate to talk about <laughs> uh, money, with with movies, how much they made, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but I don't think the film did as well as they had hoped. Well, what happens over time is the box office. I mean, it's a difficult movie. Can you remember? It's a very difficult yeah. movie for a special audience. And uh, you know, over time, these box office numbers are forgotten. It's right. like uh, it's a wonderful life. Absolutely. It was like a medium flop when it came out. True. And that sort of goes away, and movies come back and. They, either, they have a know, life, they have on a their, life. based on their quality, not on their box office. I like the way you phrase that, medium flop instead of medium hit. That's... What'd you say? I, I, like, oh, you like I, way I, I like the way medi medium flop instead of medium hit. Well, it's hit. because I don't have a command of the English language. <laughs> I have to make up things. <laughs> this film, House I'll, I'll be saying things like, I think House Sitter is really funniest. <laughs> what? There's nothing wrong with that. It sounds okay. good to me. House Sitter, since you brought it up, yeah. is truly one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long time. It's got... Uh, <sighs> Well, first of all, it has such a, uh, an interesting setting, and the people in it are, are to me, interesting, and I trust to uh, most people who will see the film. 
uh, they're, they're not your 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 ordinary ordinary characters. Um, was there something in particular that that let me ask each of you this that that drew you uh, to those specific characters? I had some questions about this character and that she was odd and made some kind of uh, odd choices um, and I wanted to do uh, there were a lot of things that dis made, were deciding factors to do this movie one is that my kids read it and loved it yeah. <laughs> and uh, Oliver said he read it all through dinner one night before I had read it and my son Oliver who's 15 said mom you've got to do this movie Steve Martin is going to be so <laughs> funny and I said well great what about my character Anyway, I then ran and read the movie, and it was funny. And she, she's an odd kind of character, and I thought, mm, this would be an interesting and fun thing for me to play. But it was Steve who I wanted to work with. It was a funny script. Mm -hmm. uh, the character I had some questions about. However, in our meetings and so forth, we answered most of them. Um, and uh, the director, Frank Oz, was great. And yes. I, just after doing two dramas, I really wanted to do something funny. And with... You know, who I consider an extremely funny man. The film you just did for, uh, for MGM um, um, Crisscross was, uh, I thought, superb. Thank you. Just superb. Uh, Steve, let me ask you the same question then uh, about the character you play. Um, well, I seldom choose a, a select a movie on the character. I look at it and I see a funny movie. Uh -huh. And, you know, Goldie has a very flashy part and I have sort of a, it, on paper it's kind of a reactive part, but I think it kind of changed yeah. during the shoot, shooting of it. So I was happy, I'm happy to be in and around mm -hmm. these kind of movies. What I love about this movie is because it's, because the story is so interesting or at least to me. <laughs> you never know where it's going. And that's very hard to find in a movie today because usually it's, you know, oh, they're going to meet. Oh, they're going to end up together. Oh, let's go home. And you don't know where this movie's going. And, and also, I like that the movie starts when you watch it with an audience and there's just a couple of laughs for the first 15 minutes because the story is being set up. Mm -hmm. right. And then suddenly, when the plot starts gets, compli gets complicated, there's these bursts of spontaneous laughter just from a character walking in a room. Yeah. You, know, you can hear that, uh-oh. Yeah. All right, then I think it's fair to say, since um, the movie opens in a, a, a rather, as you say, unconventional way, we shouldn't probably tell the audience that the two characters end up shooting each other at the end of the movie. That, that, no. that, that would kind of spoil it for them, it I, I think. Terrible. Yeah. What's, um, what's the next for each of you, film-wise? Nothing for me. Vacation time. No. Yeah. I'm doing Well, you've film. been doing movie after movie. Yeah. I mean, uh, so I'm taking a rest. Yeah. I'm doing a film in Texas. It's sort of a dramatic film in which I oh. play a con man evangelist. Ooh, that sounds great. Yeah, and the nutty letters have oh. already started to show up. Someone would like say that, that that's almost redundant, uh, uh, a con man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I think that's legitimate. <laughs> that, that, yeah. no, that, should, that sounds well, very, very interesting. Everybody has to make a living. Uh, well, my thanks to you for, for taking this time to, to talk about House Center for, for Universal because it's, um, as I said at the onset, it, it is indeed one of the funniest movies I've seen in a long time with, with little touches throughout that I think people will just get a, a, a big kick out of. And uh, uh, what, what more from, uh, from this, this, this kind of film can you ask? You oh, that's know? great, thank you. So uh, my thanks to you and I, I certainly Look forward to our uh, our next talk. What is happening? Well, if you just listen. I'm listening. I'm listening. All right. I was hungry, okay? So I went to Keller's Market to just pick up some peanut butter and stuff, and that's where I overheard Hazel telling whoa, Travis. Whoa, 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 Hazel? Hazel Byron. 
You know Mrs. Byron? Yeah, your piano teacher? Great gal. I don't know if you heard about her son Stewie, but oh, what he put that poor woman through. Wait a minute, go back to the part at the grocery store where Mrs. Byron says to Mr. Keller. Okay, so she told him to just put it on her cap. You charge the groceries to me? Well, I was hungry. Now, come on, you gotta understand that. Well, what'd you tell him? How'd you get him to do it? Well, I guess he was under the impression that I was... Insane? Mm. No, I just told him to go ahead and put it on our account. Our account? Well, it seemed harmless. You told him you were my wife? 